guys, welcome to ITS Information Technology Skills. On this video, we're going to learn how to draw a context diagram. So let's start. First, let's have the definition of a context diagram. Context diagram is also called as context level diagram. It is also called as the level 0 DFD. So why it was called level 0 DFD? Because it is the highest level in a data flow diagram. Context diagram is a simple model that defines the boundaries and interfaces of the proposed system with the external entities. So that is the definition of a context diagram. Before we start creating or writing our context diagram, first we need to identify what are the symbols or shape being used when creating a context diagram. First symbol is the external entity. For the external entity, it is being placed on a square or rectangle shape. So external entity is an element that inputs data to the system or retrieve data from the system. So if we say external entities, they are the one who gives data to the system. They also receive or retrieve data from the system or both. Okay, so external entity can send data or give data to the system or they can also receive or retrieve data from the system okay so that is being identified using by the arrow okay so what is this arrow this arrow is called as the flow line it illustrates the flow of data it is supported by a text stating what data is being sent or retrieved so that is the use of flow line then next we have the process for the process the shape being used is circle it is when an action takes place on a data turning it into information so basically in a context diagram there is only one process which represents the entire system okay so when we are creating our context diagram there is only one process that we need to place so let's have an example. Let's say we're going to have the basic calculator. First, we have the process. Inside the process, we have here the system, which is named basic calculator. Okay, so if we are talking about the basic calculator, we have what we call as the user. Okay, so the user is the one who uses the calculator. So does the user gives or send something to the calculator? Of course, yes. Okay, so for the calculator to function, the user must send something to the process. Okay, so what data is being given by the user? The user needs to give the first number, the operator that he needs, and the second number. So after sending the first number, the operator, and the second number to the system or the process, does the process need to give something to the user? Of course, yes. So the process will send or give data or information to the user. So what data is being given to the user? It is the calculated result okay so this is an example of context diagram for a basic calculator let's have another example let's say you want to create a chat application when creating the context diagram for this let's have the process okay so inside the process we have there the name of the application which is chat application okay so if we're talking about chat we have what we call as the sender what does the sender provides to the application? The sender will provide the message. Aside from the message, the sender will also give the receiver's name or the contact details. Of course, for a message to be sent, the application needs the receiver's information. So after receiving all the data needed for the chat, this process will now give something to what we call as the receiver. So what does the receiver receives from the chat application? Of course, we have the message. So aside from the message, the receiver will also receive the sender's name or the contact details of the sender. So after the receiver receives the message, can the receiver send a message to the sender? Of course, yes. The receiver can also input message to the application and the application can send or give the message to the sender. So basically, the message is being transferred vice versa. It's either 
sender or the receiver so if the receiver gives the message or input the message to the application he will become now the sender okay so this is an example of context diagram for a chat application okay so for the next video we're going to create the level one level two and other levels of data flow diagram so if you want to learn more about data flow diagram don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more tutorial videos. And if this video helps you, don't forget to give this a like. Bye!